Today we've got another simple science segment coming your way and a lot of times we're walking through our garden and we're looking for the perfection that is in our garden and while as gardeners a lot of times we see the imperfection, we see those weeds that need to be pulled and things like that, we're not talking about the garden as a whole today, we're talking about the flowers specifically. Did you know that there are perfect and imperfect flowers? That's truly what they are called. But before we get into what is a perfect and imperfect flower, we first need to talk about the parts of a flower. And in order to do that, we're going to use a simple lily here. Um, an Easter lily is a great way to do that. Now you can see I've got a stem of lilies here and this one got a little messy on us and I'm going to explain what this is all about here. So we've got a lily, this is a complete flower, and this messy stuff is actually the pollen. Usually when florists get these and they start to open, they will pinch these off. You can see this one doesn't have any because this pollen will stain your clothes. So we're going to first start by looking on the outside of the flower. And while these all look like petals, these outside ones are actually called sepals. You can see here on the ones that are still buds, these sepals are what protect the flower as it's developing. They initially start out very green, but as the flower matures and gets closer to blooming, you can see how they're starting to get a little bit wider until it's white. But you can see how it still has that kind of green spine to the back of it. Now these sepals open up um, and create a more floral display on the inside, inviting more insects to come inside. So we're going to go ahead and tear this particular flower right here apart so that we can dissect all of these parts of the plant. So the first thing we're going to do is take our sepals and on this particular one we're going to find that there are three sepals. So we're going to go ahead and just pinch those off. One, two, and three. So we're going to lay those right there for us to see. Now you'll find that we also have three petals on here. Now it's a little hard to tell on these white ones, but a lot of times the petals will have kind of tracks and markings that are um, basically creating an invitation for your pollinators to come inside and to highlight where they need to land on their flower. So this one has sort of some bumpy marks to kind of um, entice them to come down into the body of this uh, flower here. So these are the petals. We're going to now remove those three petals. Again, it's a little messy because it does have some pollen on there as well. One, two, and three petals. So next we have what we call the male part of the plant. And in this case, we have um, six of those. And there are three parts to the male part of the flower. And I'm going to go ahead and pull one of these off. So you've this whole thing is called the stamen. And if you think about it, men is in the word stamen, so you know it's the male part of the plant. That is composed of the filament that holds the anther, and inside the anther is the pollen. And you'll notice that these filaments, they're barely attached to the anther, and that allows them to sort of dance in the wind. Again, if you think a bee comes in here and kind of is nestling around in there, um, then all of a sudden that pollen's going to then get on the bee. So that's what this is all about. We've got six of those. I've already pulled one of those off. So we're going to take one, two, three, four, and the fifth one here, and our sixth one there. So you can see these again are the stamen, the male part of the plant. And then finally we have one last part, and this is the female part of our flower here. So you can see there's like a swollen area here, and this is the ovary. Then you have your style, which is actually a tube from your sticky stigma up here. It's sticky so that the pollen will stick to it. The pollen travels down this tube into the ovary and that's how you get your seeds in all of your um, flowers that produce a fruit. So this basically is the whole female part. Again, it's all called the pistil, but comprised of the ovary, the style, and the stigma. So we're gonna go ahead and break this off too so that we've got all four parts that are necessary to have a complete flower. That's your sepals, your petals, your stamen, and your pistil. 
Now, if any one of these four parts is missing off of a flower, sometimes flowers don't have sepals or petals, then they are considered incomplete. If a plant has all four of them, they are complete. But the two most important parts of any flower are the sexual parts of that, which is the male and the female parts of the plant, because that's what, again, produces the seed, which is, in essence, what the plant is trying to do. So if you have a flower that is complete and has all of these, you know that it is also a perfect flower. It's sort of like that whole thing that a square is a rectangle, but not necessarily a rectangle is a square. There you have it. You now know what makes a perfect flower for your garden. We hope you enjoyed this video as part of our Oklahoma Gardening YouTube channel. You can also find even more videos on the OK Gardening Classics YouTube channel. And join us on social media for great gardening tips, photos, and discussion.